Hey family, so I had some thoughts on minimum wage workers and there's a lot of misconceptions in America about minimum wage workers. So a lot of people will say, well, minimum wage jobs are only entry level jobs and they're meant for high school teens. But we know that automation is taking the minimum wage jobs. For example, I saw a video where in Las Vegas, I believe it was, there wasn't cooks and instead there were robo cooks. And there are now restaurants open where a machine cooks your food and not a person. Also, when you go into Target or a grocery store, you'll see the self checkouts. Right, you go into some McDonald's places, some fast food places, there's the kiosk, okay? So we know that automation is taking a lot of minimum wage jobs. So if automation is taking a lot of jobs, and we know that um, mass immigration is leading to low wages, but the mass immigration is not the immigrants' fault. It's the, 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 the sort of, how would you call it, the... What was that word that my professor used? So, like, non-protectionist trade policies. So free trade and non-protectionist policies on trade are, you know, protectionist policies on corn production, on sugar production, on wheat production, coffee, things like that, cause uh, people to not be able to live off of agricultural jobs or regular communal jobs that they had where... There's a lot of uh, communal property that becomes privatized and it forces people off of their home land. And they're no longer able to have a small uh, farm. They have to pick uh, one crop, grow it, and then they have to try to sell it. And it's a real struggle. A lot of, I have a very good friend. Her name is Amy. I don't know if she wants me to put her last name. But she, she was from Guatemala. and Well, she is from Guatemala. And she does a lot of work with agricultural workers, and she's a big advocate for trying to help people to be able to, you know, not be abused by big agra. So, it's not the immigrants' fault that they're getting paid cheap. It's the corporations that are hiring them and not paying them the same wage. Now, some people will say, well, they don't have papers, therefore they have no right to... Um, be paid as much as a citizen but here's the thing the practical thing that I've seen like let's take a restaurant example because that's the best example because that's where most immigrants go is now is the restaurant industry other industries too but the one I know the best is the restaurant industry so for example I know how to be a host a bartender a butcher a prep cook a line cook a fry cook a server right a, a maitre d which is kind of like the person who goes around at the tables and like make sure they're comfortable and all that stuff. And I speak multiple languages and I'm very well read and I even read books on the restaurant industry service and all kinds of stuff, right? I even read a book on the history of bourbon. And when I pitched it to the boss, the head honcho in the corporation, I said, I have all these skills. Can you give me a 50 cents raise? And he flat out said no, tipped employees don't get a raise unless they are going to accept more responsibility. To which I said, well, I already do uh, way beyond what's required of me and I have a very good record and high references and lots of dynamic experience. Doesn't that count for anything? And basically I was told no. So, so when people say, well, get skills and work hard at a place for 10 years and you'll get X, that's not, that formula isn't true anymore. It's not true anymore. And I think it's time for us to start really considering what life is on this planet. Minimum wage workers don't get to see their kids. I've been noticing more and more moms are working two jobs, their husband's working, they, ha they have to pay to pay a sitter to raise their kids for them. And they're like, some of them are like 30 years old, right? And they're like, well, I'm afraid to start school. I'm afraid to um, uh, st start over again. I don't have time and I don't have the money and I'm already struggling and I can't pay the rent. And then I, I just feel so bad for them. I really do because I know their struggle. I know how they're feeling. And it's, we say, well, a lot of people, like I like Tim Pool, but he's very anti uh, $15 minimum wage. And people will say, Hey, well, if you raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour, the cost of commodities will just go up and therefore it will solve nothing. So 
to which I say, indeed, but there can be, uh, to, in order to fix that, there should be a, some type of tax put back on the corporation for not paying their worker a living wage because these people who can't survive on their wages, even though they're working full time, family, they then go on the public welfare net. And then when the welfare spending goes up, these same people say, hey, well, cut that spending. We need to cut our deficit. We need to cut this, right? So that then leaves more people to struggle. It really does. So not only do they not want to raise wages, they they then don't want even a social safety net to continue. So what do they expect people to do? I mean, honestly, if you see that the crime pays faster than college, when you see that society doesn't care for you and that they will just let you starve, when you have to beg certain churches and certain churches are corrupt and don't do their duty, they only help the most loyal of the churches when they should just help people for helping them, what kind of society are we creating? Okay? The wage that's so low can make you feel worthless. It can make somebody depressed. Being at work all day is a miserable existence. I knew this manager guy who his rent was 3000 a month in Corte Madera. These ugly apartments that were so small that were by the freeway family. Not even, not even a good location, right? But the rent is so high here that people are struggling. And he has to work six days a week double. He don't even see his wife. What kind of life is that? Tell me, family. Is that a human's purpose? A human's purpose to just work for some schmuck in an office, right? To just grind out your life? And then they say, well, go and get it. Go choose the job that will fulfill you. But are we, are we setting people up to be able to achieve that? And then they say, oh, well, there's a free market. You can go out there, find what skills work. The cream rises to the top. Yeah, but so do turds. Turds also rise to the top. And urine penetrates all levels. So what does that really mean? What does it mean? I mean, I, and these women are not, and these men, these families, they're not with their kids. And they're, and how does that make the kid feel? Right? Like, my mom and dad are at work. I mean, even my little one, she'll tell me, Mommy, I cried. And I'm like, why did you cry? She's like, you were at work, mommy, and I was missing you, and you weren't here. And that breaks my heart, and I'm not even at work that long. You know? And we don't realize what that's doing to our kids. It's not normal. What we're living now, think about it, family. We, we have evolved in a society where there was grandmas, grandpas, family units, and now we are becoming atoms floating in this matrix that's ruled by money. It's ruled by money. And I get we can't have a barter system. I get we can't go backwards, but what I think we should do is we should start considering quality time and what that means for workers. I don't think just the rich should have time, and some people will say, well, what do you mean, Milan? The rich, they also don't get to see their kids, and they also pawn their kids off to boarding schools, and they also, their kids suffer, and their kids are grow up all weird because they've been privileged, but they haven't had love. And so I'm like, okay, yeah, that's a point, but... When you have a society that's like, let's say a billionaire, right? They say, well, those billionaires, they do philanthropy and they earned it. Therefore, they have a right to it. But they couldn't even spend all that money in their life if they wanted. Now, this doesn't mean that I believe we should tax them and redistribute the wealth. But what I do think is, is it really going to hurt Jeff Bezos if he pays his workers well? Bernie Sanders is the one who pushed him for a $15 an hour minimum wage. And it is true. Now, people say, well, 15 bucks in Louisiana, you're going to be balling. 15 bucks in New York, not so much. So here's what I think. We need the communities to come together, right? We need to be active with our local councils and our local city folk and our local politicians and our mayors, our governors, and is what I'm saying, our senators. And we need to say, hey, you need to have some communication with the job market. I, you know, these companies will will definitely pay the as cheap as they can to maximize capital. And I understand that's how capitalism works. Okay? So, but here's the thing. It's not sustainable. I don't think that endless growth, endless consumption is sustainable. Right? I don't think that's sustainable for a family. Because I see men all day 
who are married, they have kids, and they're more, they're not even with their wives as much as they are with the ladies at work. And they're tempted all day. And it's not really normal. You're like, well, wait a minute. We used to be in the past outside under the blue sky working or with a small family business. You're with your family. But now it's like, no, your man is mostly around, you know, a hot secretary being tempted. And her, she may, she may have a man who's at his work being tempted. And she herself might have emotions she can't deal with and is being tempted also by a handsome coworker or whatnot. And it might not just be for lust, it could be for companionship, for emotion connecting, it could be for talking, right? People feel lonely and then their work becomes their second home. And when the work becomes the second home, things that happen in the home behind closed doors happen in the office closed door. That's the truth, family. I've seen it. I've seen it. And so, so many people will say, well... You know, that's those couples' problems. But are we making it that way? Have we created a system where people are spending more time in temptation and dead-end jobs, becoming zombies to make other people rich? So that what? So that those rich people can go and buy shoes they don't need? For what? For what? So they can buy more crap that's just going to get dumped in the ocean? I don't get it. I really don't. I'm, I mean, I wonder what's going to happen to us in the future. I mean, we, the thing is, is we look at China, for example, and their, and their factories. We look in the Philippines with the sweatshops. And we say, well, thank God that's not us. Oh, I only have to work nine hours. They have to work 14. Uh, it's not that bad. And then they spend, they're so miserable, right, that they either eat themselves to a pompous, you know, gorge themselves on food. And then they go and need to alter their consciousness through drugs because they need to feel alive again because they're dead see it's connected it's connected these minimum wage jobs where you feel like you're worth nothing where people look at you like you're nothing your boss doesn't reward you for all your hard work you're not valued you're seen as a loser of course those people are going to go out and use drugs of course those people are going to suffer i don't know man I'm happy that I'm starting to get into minimalism and off the consumerist plantation. It's not normal. I don't. I hope it doesn't spread this corporatocracy that we're going into, where these corporations are ruling our lives. They're propagandizing us to just be slaves, economic wage slaves. How can we look into the sky, right? Look at the sky and think to ourselves. The only reason why I'm here is to spend nine hours a day, five days a week, making someone else money. And I get not all of us can be entrepreneurs. But I would encourage us, we need to start, we need to start buying from each other. We need to start supporting each other. I'm going to try to make sure that I buy more from the small scales as much as I possibly can. Family, will you do it with me? Can we change the system? I hope so. Because... I think we're going to go into a dark world. I mean, I know, I've known some women who, oh man, it's really sad, where they work a lot. And I knew one chick, she gave her son up to her grandparents to raise. And all she's doing is just partying. And I don't want to be judgmental, but I thought to myself, holy crap, this person has given up the opportunity to raise their child so she can sit and drink mimosas at a bar trying to look hot. It's really strange. I've seen so many strange things in California. This place is weird. The city is a weird place. It's so unhealthy. I get some people, like, I get some people get bored in the countryside. There's not much to do. There's maybe no action. But man, once you've smelled enough pigeon poop, once you've seen enough garbage, once you've passed enough graffiti, once you've had enough crime happen to you, you start to realize that freedom lies out of the city. But that the, co the government, the corporations are trying to keep you out of the woods, right? Now it's going to the woods are becoming a rich commodity where the rich people only have a right to vacation. Only they have a right to go out. But all of us, the labor force, we don't have that right because we didn't inherit the money or... We weren't willing to go $200,000 in debt for student stuff. I mean, it's strange. It's strange how often women are being encouraged to give up precious time with their children to go work. 
And it's, it's important, though, for women to have independence, financial independence. Abigail Adams, John Adams' wife, spoke a lot about this, how you can't just give a supreme power to men over women financially because they can become tyrants. And indeed, this is true. I think women and men, we have to be partners. We have to be partners to really understand what a partnership means. And to also have more unity amongst us even though we're all all across the globe i think that it's time that we start really thinking about what labor means and what you're here for i know people who work so much that they get home they got about two hours and a half before they got to go to bed and then they just zonk out in front of the tv like some deranged beast because they want to feel human again and it makes me sad it makes me very sad I wonder why all these people are feeling, you know, so much types of depression and struggling. It's because we have a system that feeds off of it. Think about it. We're just like a sheep in a slaughter yard here in the U.S. That's how I feel. Think about it. If you're a person, right, there's going to be people who make money off of you getting plastic surgery, making you change your hair, making you wear makeup, making you buy jewelry making you want to go out to the best places to spend money you don't have to impress people who don't really care about you. And then on top of it, when you get sick, they make even more money. And then when you're depressed because of the life that they put you on, the field they put you on, the game, the game board they put you on, they make money too. And then the side effects, like I, my grandma and my mother suffer from mental illness and watching those medications it's such a nightmare watching how they affect them and sometimes they work and then they stop working and then they have to change the dosage and when they change the dosage it alters them to where you don't even know who they are anymore. They're not there anymore. Their soul is gone in a way and it comes back. It's really strange and it's scary to see how those rates are rising. And then family on top of that those pain, no, no sorry not the pain pills, those two though. But those mental pills, those antipsychotics, those brain-altering drugs, then they say, oh, well, it pollutes the womb. Oh, well, it pollutes the kidneys. And it's like, geez, man, it's all connected. I wonder if we need to go back to the simple way of life. If we need to really re-examine what we're doing, why we're here. And I don't think it's just to, just to make money. But they're making it that way. We're going back to being peasants. America used to be a land of freedom. But then you have to wonder if the spirits of everyone who was killed during the genocide conquering phase, the karma has come back upon all who live here and realizing we're not doing our duty. I often wonder, you know Lord of the Rings where there's the giant eye of Saruman, right? I think the media is like that. I think it's like the alternative media on YouTube is so powerful and it's breaking people free of the brainwashed mindset, the mind control. I hate to use that word, but it's really like a mind control. And now you notice that the big mega corporations are trying to take it over. CNN is, you know, a big proponent of trying to shut down free speech. And now you have politicians who are like, the internet is dangerous. Yeah, there's some people who believe the earth is flat. Yeah, there's some people who think we didn't land on the moon but let those people exist because there's good people like you family we all we all live in different places but we can connect and that's a beautiful thing what do you guys think about the minimum wage what do you think about wages in general how do you measure human time now there's the command economy a free market economy an open market there's definitely different economic systems right and ways in which you deal with that but what if we can invent a hybrid of it? What if we can invent a new system of labor? And yeah, it'll take massive reform, but I don't think that we can just start looking at the world as a means to an end for capital. That's kind of what's gotten us into trouble all along. It was the search for gold, right? And then it was, well, cotton needs to be produced for money. And then slaves got captured and put on cotton fields, right? Then it was sugar. Then it was tobacco. Now it's, you know, animals in factory farms. We just seem to be like a species who likes to enslave each other. 
so that one can relax and get fat while the other slowly withers away from emotional and physical ailments. I don't want to see it anymore. It's really troubling me more and more now. And California is such a lie. They hide the disease and decay that is festering on the streets. I want to be brave and go amongst those poor souls who are struggling and living in tents in San Francisco, but here's the thing, if one of them attacks you or bites you, gives you an infection, the state doesn't have to pay for that. And I would be the one who'd have to pay out of pocket. So it's dangerous, it's a risk, but the street people of Los Angeles, they're a good Instagram page, regardless of their politics. They're exposing the lies that Gavin Newsom, Kamala Harris, and what the marketing agents are covering up. Marketing agents show you California as Sausalito, Tiburon, Napa, uh, Hollywood. They show you the beautiful side, right? To get you to come here. But this place is a trap. This place is a trap, family. Don't go to L.A. A lot of people from L.A. are going to get mad when I say this, but once you pay the high rent, it's so hard to save up money to leave. This place was once good, but think about it. How high the rent is, just do a quick Google search, family. Bay Area apartments. Apartments. No dog, no yard, no barbecue, no space, loud neighbors. And then you got people who have like eight roommates in each one, and I've done that. It's not a good way to live, family. It's not a good way to live. It's so unhealthy. No wonder why people are bursting out and going crazy. What do you think, family? I know I've done a lot of videos today, but my mind is booming. And it's important to let those ideas come out because maybe y'all have some similar thoughts. Maybe you've seen some things. Maybe you disagree on some things. We all learn from each other, so there's no hate here. Only love. But I want to know how I can help the world. I'm going to make sure I can sponsor more kids. I already sponsor two, and I have my own. But my goal is not to have a bunch of dumb jackets or a bunch of stupid sweaters by expensive brands. No. I gotta help as many people as I can. What do you think, family? What do you think about the labor market right now? Where you are, across the globe, how do we make it so that not others have to be our rugs that we step on top of so that we can eat? How do we break bread and share our bread? But how do we also motivate people to be self-sufficient? It's a dynamic topic. One that has no true easy answer. We got it. Our solution in America is just to put people in prison when they do crimes. Then when they get out, they have a stigma of being a criminal, which some of them deserve it, but some don't. How do we fix it? And then when they go to prison, the kids are left behind. Or they get put into the foster care system, which is nightmarish. And in the foster care system, there's a bunch of padrotes or pimps they call them ready to take your daughters to pimp your sons they'll do whatever it takes there's a lot of wolves out there waiting to snatch up those forgotten souls that the market the free market has left out i'm not sure but it is a dark topic but my soul feels heavy because every day i'm seeing struggling mothers every day i'm seeing lonely kids Every day I'm dealing with it. Every day I see the homeless. Every day I see the drug addicts. Every day I'm bombarded with propaganda from the state. From psychotic media companies that have no ethics, no morals. What do we do to fight it? What do we do? Alright family, let me know.